almost the best thumbnail we've had in a hot minute. In the opening scene, we are introduced to two close friends, Jerry and Mike, who are talking about Jerry's relationship with his girlfriend Lisa. Both of them assume that she has been cheating on him. In an attempt to seek revenge, Mike suggests that Jerry should cheat on Lisa as well. However, Jerry is uncertain about how he can do so, since he does not have any other love interests. Mike claims to have a solution for this, and takes Jerry to a brothel, promising him that he has something special arranged for him. This is already such a stupid idea. Throughout their journey, Jerry is asked to cover his face with a plastic bag in order to create a proper surprise for him. When they finally arrive at the brothel, they are greeted by the owner, Madame Zora. We see that the place has an eerie and unconventional atmosphere, and the most peculiar thing is that the escorts already know Jerry's name. Following this, Jerry is directed to an empty and dark lit room and is locked in from the outside, leaving him confused. As he explores the room, he discovers a black box with the phrase, stick it in here, written on it. Initially finding it amusing, he eventually unbuttons his pants and proceeds to follow the instructions. In the midst of this, Mike is shown having coitus with three other workers in an adjacent room. While enjoying himself, he suddenly hears Jerry's loud scream, causing him to panic. So, without wasting any time, he ditches the ladies and rushes to his friend, only to find him lying unconscious on the bed. Let's hope that wasn't the pain box from Dune. Mike assumes that Jerry is finished up, so he buttons up his pants, places him in the car, and drives away. On their way back, Jerry regains consciousness and seems happier than ever. He also expresses his desire to do it again. However, Mike advises him to take things slowly, explaining that the so-called special thing is a one-time event. He also mentions the fact that it was very expensive. But nevertheless, Mike promises to arrange another visit soon, this time with a beautiful worker named Sin. Upon reaching home, Lisa asks Jerry where he had been, and he simply pretends that he was out drinking with Mike. In a surprising turn of events, Lisa reveals that she is pregnant, asserting that Jerry is not infertile, and that his sperm is capable of swimming. This revelation shocks Jerry, and he struggles to believe it. He questions whether the baby is truly his, but this only upsets Lisa further. The next day, Jerry goes to work and meets with Mike. He inquires about the location of the brothel house, but Mike refuses to divulge the information and tries to keep him away for some unknown reason. Desperate to revisit the place, Jerry makes a search on the internet, hoping to find its whereabouts. After a short while, he stumbles upon a similar establishment, owned by a woman named Mystic Wanda. Wasting Wasting no time, Jerry heads towards the said location and asks Wanda about Madame Zora. The woman pretends to be oblivious at first, but when Jerry offers her some cash, she quickly gives him the address to the creepy looking brothel house. Shortly after, when Jerry arrives at the place, Madame Zora greets him at the door and informs him that they are closed. However, Jerry offers her twice the amount and somehow persuades her to grant him access to the special package for one more time. Then he is escorted to the same eerie room containing containing the enigmatic box. Jerry proceeds to follow the same procedure as before, dip and dong in the dark den, satisfying his desires while fully conscious this time. Once he is done, his curiosity rises as he wants to uncover the secrets hidden within the mysterious box. He attempts to peer through the hole using his phone's flashlight and even tries to open it forcefully, but discovers that it is locked from outside. Moments later, Madame Zora enters the room to inform him that his session is over, but she finds Jerry forcefully attempting to access the box. She frantically tries to intervene. What if he finds out that it's Baby Yoda in there? But Jerry, consumed by his desperation to reveal its contents, violently kicks her to the ground and stomps her to death. After this, he grabs the mysterious box and hastily departs from the premises. He then rents a hotel room for a period of six days, hiding the box along with him. Meanwhile, at the brothel house, Detective Barnes is seen investigating the death case. He focuses on questioning Ivan, the person responsible for security and and maintenance of the brothel, but Ivan claims to know nothing, stating that he was absent during the crime as he went out to purchase groceries. The following day, Jerry is back at work, but his mind is disturbed by his recent sinful act. He simply cannot shake off the fact that he killed someone. After work, he goes back to the hotel and indulges in his desires once again. Once he's finished, he curiously inserts his hand into the hole of the mysterious box, only to discover a jelly
jelly-like sticky substance within. Gross. Intrigued, he begins touching himself with the sticky liquid, which intensifies his pleasure, indicating that there is something ma magical in the substance. Jerry collects some more of the liquid in a small bottle before heading home. When he arrives, Lisa inquires about the reason for his lateness, and Jerry simply makes a work-related excuse. I was up to my balls in it, he says. Later that night, he finds himself alone in bed and attempts to use the sticky liquid to gain pleasure. However, at the same moment, Lisa enters the room unexpectedly and catches him in the act. Thinking quickly, Jerry comes up with an excuse, pretending that he was about to surprise her. Following this, the two engage in coitus, but Jerry is desperate and aggressive in the process, causing Lisa to feel uneasy. She did not agree to a menage a trois with ectoplasm. The next day, Jerry prepares to leave, pretending that he has a client to meet. Sensing his unusual behavior over the past few days, Lisa contacts Mike and inquires if Jerry is involved in a secret affair. Mike denies any information, but promises to inform her if he notices anything suspicious. Later on, while taking a shower, Lisa experiences a sudden and sharp pain in her stomach, resulting in bleeding. This is probably due to the sticky substance that Jerry used last night. On the other hand, Detective Barnes is at the crime scene, where he discovers some occult books in Madame Zora's bookshelf. Ivan informs him that she used those books in order to cast curses on people. They then proceed to the eerie room and realize that the black, mysterious box is missing. Back at the hotel, Jerry is seen attempting to indulge himself once again by inserting himself into the box. However, this time, he is unable to do so, and instead experiences his pain in his lower abdomen, hastily removing himself from the box. He discovers bruises spreading below his belly button. This concerns Jerry, so he promptly visits a doctor. The latter runs some tests, prescribes some medication, and advises him to abstain from regular intercourse. At least take a break from the cock box there, Jerry. After this, Jerry cancels all of his work meetings for the day and returns home to rest. Unfortunately, the infection starts spreading to his stomach region. To make matters worse, Lisa approaches him with the heartbreaking news news of her miscarriage. However, Jerry pays little attention to her and simply suggests that they try again. Despite the painful bruises and medical advice, Jerry remains deeply addicted to using the sticky substance. The very next day, he returns to the hotel room, driven by his obsession. But just as he is about to put his dwarf star in the black hole, he realizes that the box is now devoid of the sticky substance. Now that he is unable to control his erotic drive, he desperately looks for ways to open the black box. As a result, Jerry visits a nearby hardware store and purchases a lock cutting tool. He then returns to the hotel room and successfully unlocks the mysterious box. After this, he retrieves its enigmatic contents and proceeds to gratify himself. Unfortunately, the consequences are dire as his bruises continue to spread across his body. Back at home, Lisa discovers Jerry's credit card statement, revealing excessive withdrawals used to rent a hotel room. At the same time, she receives a call from Jerry's workplace, notifying her of his absence. These findings solidify her doubts that Jerry is cheating on her. Fueled by her suspicions, she drives to the same hotel in an attempt to catch him red-handed. Upon breaking into his room, she detects an unfamiliar scent and assumes it to be the presence of another woman, with whom Jerry is having an affair. Lisa then searches the entire room, hoping to find some clues. When she doesn't find anything, she enters the bathroom. There, she shockingly discovers a jelly-like moving flesh that Jerry has been using for his satisfaction. However, before she can question him about it, it. Jerry attacks her from behind and chokes her tightly. When she stops resisting, Jerry releases his grip, thinking that he has succeeded in killing her. But to his utter shock, she is still alive. In a state of panic, Jerry seizes a heavy lock cutter and brutally strikes her, finally killing her. In the aftermath of this event, Jerry meticulously cleans the bloodstains from the room, wraps Lisa's lifeless body in a bedsheet, and transports it to his car. He then drives back to his home and discreetly disposes of the body in his garage. The next day, he checks out of the hotel room, carrying the peculiar moving flesh with him. Then he returns home and transforms his bedroom to resemble the eerie atmosphere of Madame Zora's brothel house. Once his setup is complete, he begins engaging in physical activities with the flesh. He's starting his own cult, called the Bone Masons. Elsewhere, Mike learns about Madame Zora's demise and decides to check on Jerry. When he reaches the latter's residence, he notices that the garage door is open. Curious, Mike enters the house and heads to Jerry's dimly lit bedroom. To his surprise, he discovers the moving flesh, leading him to suspect that Jerry is involved in something nefarious. Right then, Jerry arrives home and talks in a casual way, acting as if nothing has happened. But Mike comes to the point and tries to assure Jerry that he will remain his friend no matter 
matter what. He also promises to cover up for Jerry, even if he is involved in Madame Zora's case. However, panic sets in when Jerry reveals that he has also taken the life of Lisa. Fearing the consequences, Mike grabs his phone to contact the police, but Jerry covers his head with a plastic bag and suffocates him to death. In the next scene, we see Jerry, whose body is now completely covered in deadly bruises, but despite all this, he is still sleeping alongside the moving flesh. It seems that he has become addicted to it. Suddenly, the doorbell rings and Jerry answers it, only to find his neighbors who have come to celebrate his birthday. However, Jerry, in his deteriorating mental state, shouts at them to leave his property. Be gone! All I want for my birthday is to put my dick in the goop! He then returns to his bedroom and discovers that the once moving flesh is now lifeless. Overwhelmed with despair, he breaks down in tears, uncertain of what to do next. Frantically, he rushes to Madame Zora's brothel and seeks assistance from Ivan. The latter is shocked to see his state. Nonetheless, he instructs Jerry to wait in the same creepy room from earlier, while he takes the dead flesh with him. As Jerry waits, his body undergoes a grotesque transformation. His hair falls out, his teeth deteriorate, and his skin gradually morphs into jelly-like substance, rendering him repulsive in appearance. Meanwhile, Ivan crafts another black box with a hole, inscribing the same message on it before placing it in the creepy room. By this time, Jerry has become a sentient mass of flesh. Shortly after, Ivan proceeds to detach Jerry's head from his body and places it inside the black box. In the final scene, Detective Barnes arrives at the brothel and informs Ivan that Jerry is their prime suspect. However, Ivan deftly changes the subject and offers the detective the special experience leading him to the creepy room containing the black box. Huh, Jerry's fucked now. Ooh.